Welcome to Talk About Topeka. I'm Chris Schultz, and we have a great show for you tonight. Our first guest is the mayor of Topeka, Bill Button. We'll probably discuss, you know, how things are going in Lawrence and maybe how the Chiefs are doing. Uh, I'll also talk with the president and CEO of Capital Federal of Topeka, Mr. John Dykus. This episode was sponsored by the WIBW channels and The Break Room, downtown's best spot for a breakfast buffet, home-style lunches, and of course, the Gourmet Cabaret Dinner Theater. Find them online at breakroomdowntown.com. Watching this show burns up to 300 calories if you're currently running on a treadmill. But if you're watching us at Applebee's, you can lose up to... Uh, Negative 1,500 calories? Either way, it all starts right now. It's a really exciting show today with Talk About Topeka. I'm Chris Schultz, and I'm sitting here with the mayor of Topeka, Mr. Bill Bunton, a legend in his own right. How are you, Mr. Bunton? I'm fine, Chris. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit with you just in the middle of uh, my restaurant down here, just to show people that uh, you're a person. Uh, isn't that amazing, folks? It's, it's <laughs> Mayor Button. <laughs> did, did you say I was a legend in my own mind, or did you say In I'm your own a... right, yeah, oh. yes, yes, yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, whichever, I guess, right? I <laughs> well, um, I wanted to uh, start off, uh, you've been a politician for a long time, you've been serving, uh, serving all of us. Uh, you started serving our country being a Marine. Uh, so, how do you think that affected your, uh, you know, ability to uh, be a good politician? Well, it's a good question. I'm not sure, Chris, that uh, it affected it in, in any significant way. I uh, had graduated from college in the spring of 1952. Uh, hadn't been in ROTC. So I decided that I'd follow my older brother, Bob, and join the Air Force. Mm -hmm. He eventually became a pilot and flew combat missions in Korea. And uh, I thought that you know, I'd certainly be popular with the girls if I was a pilot. So I joined their force. But then I went home and I thought to myself that I'm not sure I've made the right decision because one, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> and two, I'm not very good at details, which is not a good thing if you're an airplane pilot. Yeah. So I went back and talked to the recruiting sergeant, and he agreed with me and let me out. And I went down the hall and joined the Marines. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Marine way is that you forget everything you learned before and start from scratch, and you do it the Marine Corps way. That had, for someone coming out of college that never had any particular discipline, why it was um, a real uh, severe lesson, a good lesson to learn how to be self-sufficient, take care of yourself, follow orders, and be dependable. And the war was over. We ran patrols trying to get cross line crossers and things like that. But um, I never fired a shot in anger. <laughs> <laughs> I was grateful for that. Yeah. Um, all of these experiences. Uh, in sports and in the Marine Corps and in the legislature tend to, if you pay attention, tend to mold what kind of a person you are. Uh, my interest in uh, running for the state legislature in 1962 was largely because I was young and thought that we were overtaxed and had too much government and I was going to fix that. Yeah. And uh, I didn't. Uh, gratefully. Well, yeah. Uh, most of the, th it's easy to criticize government, but um, government is established to do certain things. Uh, the city, for example, it'd be pretty hard to have a private police force, sure. uh, a private fire department, or uh, someone like public works to take care of uh, infrastructure, and sure. streets, and sewers, and what have you. And of course, a zoo. We used to have parks and recs, but that was ceded to the county. And mm -hmm. I, I'm pleased that I think they're doing a good job of it. All of the experience that I had that led me to get into politics uh, uh, were positive. I, uh, I wouldn't trade a day of it, uh, but you always walk away from politics uh, 
feeling that uh, you didn't accomplish very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you've been involved in politics since 62. Uh, what do you think in that time are the things that you're most proud of that you've been able to accomplish or that there are some of the pieces of legislation uh, in your time in the, the uh, House and the Senate? Well, the big things that the state government does is provide a highway system, provide an educational system, a prison system, a social welfare system, and things of that that are big in nature. And we're here uh, long before I uh, started in the legislature. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we did, uh, that did happen, that uh, if, for example, in the area of education, uh, we started funding uh, the community college system. Mm -hmm. We brought in uh, Wichita State into the state system. Mm -hmm. uh, Washburn uh, ha now receives significant state aid. Mm -hmm. uh, we put in a great deal of money, about half of all of the general fund dollars uh, at the state level uh, go to education. Mm -hmm. That's the big one. And uh, But there are things that are going to have to be done, including at some point in time, increased prison space. I'm a hardliner on capital punishment. I, I think premeditated murder should be on the books. I can't help but think that at some point, someone with a gun is going to be looking at someone uh, with the idea that they were going to shoot them, but don't, yeah. because that possibility is, uh, is on the book. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You got to teach. You have to rule with a strong fist. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, one of the things that I think is that I'm most proud of that, that in looking over some of the things that, uh, that you'd done. Uh, but in 2005, there was the, uh, the Snowball Act. Uh, it was a little girl that had sent you a, uh, a letter and asked you about um, why the city of Topeka wouldn't allow them to throw snowballs. Uh, mm. and, uh, and you wrote you wrote her back and you said, I would go outside, throw a snowball, and go to the police station and report myself and throw myself on the mercy of the court. I mean, <laughs> tell us a little bit about how that went. Well, I got a, a letter from uh, a young lady. I think she was in maybe grade school or high school. Uh, and they were looking at silly laws uh, at, in states and communities all across the country. Mm -hmm. And the fact you couldn't throw a snowball uh, in, in uh, Topeka, Kansas caught their attention, so they wrote to me. I, I looked into it a little bit, as I recall. The problem was that they had people would stand on a bridge where uh, an overpass for uh, uh, the highway, they might take a snowball and throw it down and mm -hmm. then cause an accident. Yeah. Pretty unlikely, but yeah. anyone, someone thought that that was a good idea to have that kind of law in there. I, I remember another, and there were several, but I remember one of them was that you, you couldn't take chickens across Kansas Avenue. <laughs> uh, I think that was in the 1880s or something like that. <laughs> Uh, but uh, they, I think there's a book that actually has some silly uh, laws. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Kansas Avenue, um, you know, you're preaching to the choir about uh, to me because I I'm a believer in in taking care of downtown Topeka and Kansas Avenue, um, obviously. And uh, but to, to the folks at home, uh, why is it important? Why is this push to um, to maintain Kansas Avenue? Why is this an important uh, piece for our our city to look at? Well, we ought to make it uh, mandatory viewing so that everybody understands where we're coming from on Kansas Avenue. Mm -hmm.
Fake meteorologist Chris Schultz here with your weekend fun forecast. As you can see by our WIBW Topeka newsletter, talkabouttopeka.com logo cam, there's a 100% chance of fun this weekend here in the capital city. It's our favorite time of year, and that means time for the Cider Days Fall Festival. Go to Landon Arena this Saturday or Sunday for a huge event featuring 250 exhibits, an exotic petting zoo, and the best food of the season. Kids under 10 get in free. Visit CiderDaysTopeka.com to find out more. The Topeka Symphony Orchestra is performing at Washburn University's White Concert Hall this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. You can hear pieces from Mozart, Bruck, Copeland, and Bernstein. These are always terrific shows, and you can even visit TopekaSymphony.org to sign up for a gourmet dinner at 6. Take it from me, you don't want to miss this essential part of Topeka culture. Lifehouse, who you may remember from our interview of Executive Director Kelly Stevens, will be hosting an evening in the park this Saturday from 6.30 to 9.30. Support local kids in need by enjoying wonderful music, fine wine, and live and silent auctions. Visit LifehouseChildAdvocacyCenter.com for more info. In addition to the downtown farmer's market happening every Saturday from 7.30 to noon in the Judicial Center parking lot, there is also a Monday market at the Topeka Public Library. As you can imagine, this market includes books and librarians that can help you find new recipes and gardening tips. It's happening every Monday morning from 8 to 11.30. Ravenwood Lodge, whose owner Ken Corbett was also on our show, will be hosting a Second Amendment Freedom Shoot event on Saturday. Reservations are required, so give them a call and express your freedom on the range. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Be sure to check out all the cool stuff happening this weekend in the capital city. I'm Chris Schultz, and remember, keep talking about Topeka. You had a well, we're here with John Dykus. He's the president and CEO of Capital Federal Savings. How you doing, John? Good. How you doing? I'm Chris, excellent. Nice to see you. Thank thanks you for so having much. me. Hey, thanks for coming. I really appreciate that. Uh, so, Cap Fed, it's it's an icon in Topeka, and it's it also extends way beyond the bounds of Topeka as mm -hmm. well. Uh, but tell us a little bit about uh, the little bank that could right here, Cap Fed. Well, we uh, Capital Federal has been in Topeka since 1893, so we've got a little history here mm -hmm. uh, coming up on our 120th uh, anniversary next wow. year. So. Uh, a lot of history here in Topeka, and Topeka has been great to us. But uh, we've been here, and then we uh, branched into Lawrence. Was our first uh, opportunity outside of Topeka, but then uh, we're also in Kansas City, Wichita, Emporia, Salina, Manhattan, and we've had our first few branches uh, in the Missouri area, up uh, north of Can in the north part of Kansas City. Uh, in the last two or three years, so excellent. Ventured across state line. Uh, <laughs> now, so. so I know a couple years back there was uh, a story that was on the national news, mm -hmm. and uh, you guys were uh, were pretty uh, pre doing pretty good. The the national news and the guys in New York were looking at Topeka to say what you guys did right. Tell us a little bit about that experience. That was kind of a neat experience back in the fall of 2008, when obviously the uh, financial crisis kind of hit in the late summer early September and a lot of big banks across the country were in trouble and going through the uh, bailout, uh, so to speak, at that time for a lot of the big banks. Uh, we got a call in early November from uh, NBC, the Today Show, yeah, that they were looking to do a story on a bank that got it right. And uh, they looked at a few across the country and somehow we popped up on their radar uh, with Excellent. that. And uh, fortunately, I think at that time, our stock is maybe what uh, got the attention uh, for Capital Federal in that regard, and they looked at it uh, and saw that uh, the stock was up, and you know, which was a good indicator that maybe something was right uh, at that time frame. And so, they called, and I uh, got an opportunity to talk to uh, Aaron Burnett uh, for a while, and just cool. trying. I think the initial call was trying to figure out is there a story here other than you know a bank that stock is up for the year and sure, sure. yeah had a good conversation there and yeah i think maybe the deal thing that sealed the deal was i mentioned at the end the uh, about dorothy and the wizard of oz and uh, <laughs> you know everybody always talks about kansas in that regard but they always forget that uh, dorothy's trying to get back to kansas that's uh, right that's right and so to me it's a positive about that and fortunately uh, maybe with that story 
she was a big Wizard of Oz fan growing up. <laughs> so, yeah, they ended up uh, coming to Topeka and uh, filming a spot on uh, Capitol Federal and uh, the Capitol City here and going around town taking some great video and footage around the town and then uh, interviewed me for the piece. And, yeah, then uh, it was probably a couple weeks later before it was on, uh, we got bumped two or three times, so we hadn't really ever There's told all kinds any. of other news happening or anything? Other news, <laughs> and uh, I mean, even some of them, they'd call and say the night before, okay, it's going to be on tomorrow morning, and then something would happen overnight, and, uh, you know, the feel-good stories uh, tend to uh, get bumped in those regards, so yeah, yeah. Uh, never really told anybody about it, because you never know whether it'll actually happen or not, <laughs> and then one morning they said it'll be on for sure, and Somebody uh, who was from Topeka, but then at that time was living on the East Coast, saw it back there first. And yeah. So we knew it would be on. And, you know, it was great because I think uh, people in Topeka and a lot of people around Kansas uh, took a lot of pride uh, in what Capitol Federal was doing sure. and what it said about Topeka and the state of Kansas. Yeah, yeah, they should have. Also, they should have, yeah. And I think they should. It, uh, it was a neat story about that. And, uh, you know, it was amazing. We had kind of struggled for a couple of years as a lot of these banks were doing well and getting into the kind of lending that uh, fortunately we stayed out of. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to do it. Yeah, it's nice to still be around to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, we, we stayed out of that and, you know, we're kind of looked at, you know, don't you know what you're doing? Look what all your competitors are doing. And all of a sudden, you know, in one little piece on the Today Show, yeah, we were validated for what we were doing. So it was uh, a nice recognition for Capital Federal, but I think an even nicer recognition for Topeka and the state of Kansas. Well, and and as besides uh, bringing national attention for doing things right, uh, you know, you guys have done so much for the community around here. I know uh, if you just drive down the street, you can see uh, the the natatorium at the Hummer Sports Park. I mean, it's Capitol Federal's names all over it, uh, making great things happen. I mean, you you see posters for events around town. Chances are you see a Capitol Federal logo and they're being very generous to give back to the community. Um, you see downtown, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about downtown redevelopment going on. Uh, and you guys answered the call with a beautiful uh, rehab of the building and, and to see the, the signs on the outside of the building and the glass, I mean, it, that's really spectacular and thank you for, I don't know if people say thanks for doing that, but thanks for doing that. I well, appreciate that. Well, you're very that. kind to say that and uh, we do get a lot of compliments, uh, especially had a lot of nice compliments on the building uh, downtown and the renovation that we've done there both inside and out and for the most part most people see the outside and uh, have really made some nice comments about it and it's turned out uh, very well and uh, you know the nice part is uh, all the contractors and subcontractors are local yeah, people yeah, either from Topeka or in and around Kansas here so it's nice to have yeah, that aspect to the building, too, that uh, we didn't go outside uh, the state or Topeka to uh, get the work done. You're looking yeah. for the cheapest bid or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. We kept it all here. Well, and that's another question I want to ask you is a lot of people, uh, I'm tied in downtown. I obviously love the charm of downtown. But, uh, you know, a lot of people might say, why didn't you guys just, you know, scrap the old building and go build somewhere else or, you know, pop something up? Adam Wanamaker, or why, 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 uh, why did you pick to rehab over uh, building something new? Yeah, we had a lot of options. We looked at all those uh, at the time frame. It was kind of going back to that 2008. So, yeah, it really wasn't a time you wanted to do anything too flashy uh, sure. with a decision and all. And uh, you know, Capital Federal has been in downtown Topeka uh, a presence uh, since 1893, as we talked earlier. Yeah. And really wanted to stay down here. That's uh, where our home has been and uh, looked at the opportunities and really you know, what we could do and uh, the money we were going to spend to do it. You know, we could do just uh, what we wanted and stay right there in the building. And yeah. it's been a pretty easy transition because uh, we had one vacant floor uh, at the time. So we were able to renovate that one on the inside first and then just kind of continually move, move people up. Yeah, so nobody was displaced for a long period of time. 
you know, even though anybody who's lived through a remodel, you know, whether it's home or work, it, uh, it can be quite a, interesting. It can be very interesting. <laughs> but we're excited to be a part of downtown Topeka and always have been. And uh, now with this, we're going to be committed to uh, the downtown area for quite some time. Uh, you know, if we could go 20 years into the future from now, if we were to have a really successful downtown revitalization and everything's going great in 20 years from now, uh, what would you see in that in that horoscope, that future for us? I mean, hopefully it'll be some of what, <clears throat> what uh, when I started, uh, came back from uh, school and started work at Capitol Federal in downtown Topeka, it was uh, a lot of uh, shops and restaurants were down here and it was a real vibrant place and hopefully we'll be back to that. I think mm -hmm. uh, we're working in that right direction uh, right now and uh, a lot of people are at the table talking along with city council and uh, the new city manager and hopefully we'll get uh, to that point where people you know really like to have a vibrant downtown yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know a lot of time and effort and money's been spent out about along Wanamaker and a lot of uh, what used to be downtown is out there mm -hmm. but I think we got a chance to get it back there's a lot of investment down here not only by us in the uh, building we have but you look around downtown there's a lot of yeah, other corporations that have put money into it, a lot of small businesses that have gone in and rehabbed uh, some of the nice buildings in the downtown area. And, sure. you know, if we can just, uh, you know, continually take one step at a time and uh, do some things with the Kansas Avenue streetscape and uh, maybe get some bars and restaurants uh, and the shopping, it's just, uh, you know, trying to find that uh, lead dog that, uh, yeah. you know, we can get going <laughs> down here and everybody will follow yeah. uh, at that time. But it's uh, finding the right thing that can be the catalyst for the reviver, uh, revitalization of downtown Topeka. Yeah, absolutely. Some people say movie theaters or, you know, there's a lot of things on the tables to uh, to do that. Um, I guess, if what, what, what steps would you say today that we should take if we were going to uh, give ourselves the greatest opportunity for a successful downtown in the future? I mean, I think uh, a lot of people, and I, I believe that is getting people to live downtown, but, uh, you know, trying to do something where, you know, you have the convenience that, that people need to in order to live downtown, yeah, some kind of uh, little mini market uh, that's... Uh, you know, the one I guess I always think about is Ice and Olives. It's uh, yeah. up there at 29th and Croco. Yeah, uh, yeah. That uh, something like that that uh, brings, you know, all aspects of our daily lives, you know, whether it's coffee in the morning or maybe uh, a cocktail or dinner at night. Uh, sure. Yeah. With able to uh, serve the workers in downtown. You know, if you have something like that, then you can get the people, and then I think you're going to have the other things fall in line yeah, uh, after that. Give somebody a place to stay where they really don't even have to have a car. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of urban city, you know, cities, if you have that space where you don't have to have a car, um, you can just grab a few groceries here, and you can work right over here, and you can live right over here. There's a really uh, uh, an appeal, especially mm -hmm. in the younger generations, to be able to do that. So. We're getting there, I think. We're getting there. We're getting and, there. Uh, you know, unfortunately, progress sometimes uh, doesn't move at the pace everybody would like. We always, you know, we're in a society today with, uh, you know, the microwave that we want things done right now. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. And uh, that's what we'd all like to see uh, downtown Topeka turn around, uh, you know, immediately. But uh, yeah. it takes a long pride long process to get it to happen and happen in the right way. Yeah, yeah. We want to do it so well that uh, maybe NBC will come back and talk about how we're doing something right with our downtown. There you right? go. There you go. That'd be great. <laughs> well, John, thank you so much for coming and doing the interview with us here today. Chris, I appreciate um, it. Yeah, you know, I can't let you go until we do the uh, the notorious lightning round. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, that, that's where I put uh, 60 seconds on the clock, and then uh, I ask you these silly questions, uh, and you throw me the answer that pops your head first. Right. <laughs> you didn't warn me about this part. <laughs> All right. And trust me, there are no right or wrong answers. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. If Hollywood were to make a movie about your life, who would you want to play the leading role? Uh, looking at my hairline now, uh, probably have to be Bruce Willis. Uh, I can see it. I can see it. The, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of gotten bald at this point. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be a good one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. All right. Let's see. Uh, what was your favorite TV show when you were a kid? Probably uh, My Three Sons. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's your favorite tourist attraction in Topeka? 
it's got to be the uh, Capitol Federal Natatorium at Hummer Sports Park. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to get the plug in there. <laughs> you got to right? get the plug in there. <laughs> Uh, what's your favorite bank in Topeka? Uh, let me see. Uh, <laughs> Capital Federal Savings. Hey, all right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, These are getting easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite thing to do on a Friday night in Topeka? Yeah, something, uh, you know, probably going out and watching a high school football game or uh, something along the, the sporting lines there. But, uh, you know, going out somewhere after that and getting a nice cold beer, too. There you go. Can't argue with that at all. <laughs> John, thanks so much for coming out. And uh, please come back and, uh, and keep us updated on what's going on with Capitol Federal. Will do. Yeah, you bet. Thank, Thank you. you. you bet. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks again to John Dykus and Mayor Button. This episode was sponsored by the WIBW channels and The Break Room, downtown's best spot for a breakfast buffet, home-style lunches, and, of course, the Gourmet Cabaret Dinner Theater. Find out about it at breakroomdowntown.com. If you, and yes, I mean you, want to be famous, make your own Topeka-related video on YouTube and send it to us on our website at talkabouttopeka.com. If we like it, we'll put it on our show. And if we don't like it, well, we'll probably put it on anyway and point out all the flaws as we go. For a complete listing of events in the capital city, sign up for the Topeka newsletter on our website. And come back next week for another great episode of The Real World Topeka here on MTV. I'm Chris Schultz. Good night and keep talking about Topeka. Topeka.